Hi everyone and welcome to Breaking the Cycle Two Step Forward podcast. This is number 27 Beverly, can you believe that? I know. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously my name is Chris Tuck and my lovely co-host, or I'm her co-host, is Beverly Ann and we're co-hosts <laughs> together. We, we do are. this together. Yes. Welcome everybody. And here we have another subject. Chris, what's our subject for this week? Family gatherings. And what does that bring to the fore for all of us? Yes. And it is something we've touched on under other titles, but it's something that comes up so much. That's why we thought we'd further explore this. Because I don't know how you feel, Chris, but Family dynamics is something that brings up many issues for people. And it's amazing how we often accept certain behavior um, or we accept our relationship with people because it comes under the guise of family. And we see that in, in different messages all around us. Oh yeah, it's okay, it's only my sister or it's okay, it's, it's only, that's how my dad is. But often it's good for us to look at it and think, mm, would we let a stranger speak to us or treat us in that way? Would we put ourselves into an environment that was difficult if it wasn't somebody who was family? Mm. And it's a social expectation, isn't it? Like, for example, Christmas. Yeah, there's an expectation that families just get together no matter what. Doesn't matter what's happened. That's what families do. They get together. And just as you explained, um, it's not always possible. And just because there's a societal expectation, why should you have to follow through with that if it really goes against your gut instinct and your and just the way that you want to be? Absolutely. And, you know, we've spoken before about conscious thinking and subconscious thinking yeah so our conscious thinking is you know we're doing that with our heads it's between 10 to 20 percent this is what I want to do so I want to be part of a family gathering then there's the other 80 to 90 percent which is our subconscious which is like whoa hold on the message that you know I've experienced different things there and I'm I'm not really happy about this. This is triggering me. This is making me feel unsettled. And then our conscious thinking is, oh, but this is a family gathering. We must go. It's Christmas. It's this. It's that. And actually, one of the things before we recorded this and we were talking about this, one of the things when I'm speaking to, um, with clients is we look at values, now, values are important, and quite often I have people bring up a value of family. And so your connotation, Chris, my connotation, anyone listening, will have a different meaning. My meaning of the value of family is about love, unconditional love. It's about honesty. It's about respect. But if I'm going along to a gathering just because it's expected of me mm. without checking in to my own values and asking, am I giving myself that respect? Am I giving myself that honesty, that, you know, that unconditional love? Then that's when we start to find that we are attending something and we're already on the back foot because we're yeah. not feeling good already. That's before we've even got there. Yeah. Yeah. So. You can see it, can't you, playing out in a family gathering, say like a party or Christmas dinner, whatever it is. You can see it already playing out that people don't want to be there. And then there's just something just got to happen to start an argument or a fight or something or a disagreement. You can see how it happens so easily when people are turning up to these events and they don't actually want to be there subconsciously. No, absolutely. And this is where when we do something that we we really don't want to do, it has a real effect on us physically, mentally and emotionally. Yeah. You know, and often, you know, I've got clients that realise that they get migraines on the build up to go into someone or someone may get pain on the way yeah. to go in or they may be physically sick and they're real things that are happening 
but it's all coming from that place of expectation, not wanting to go. Yeah, so expectations on by others on you about whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but we yeah. also, and we keep bringing it back to ourselves, we have to be aware of our expectations on ourselves. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, I've been asked, I'm expected to go. Yeah, that's my role. I should be going. I am the sister. I am the auntie. I am the mum. I, I have to go. That's not actually true. Because yeah, it comes of, back to those boundaries, doesn't it, Bev, that we keep banging on about is like, it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what's really good about this, because there is no one section. It's all intertwining. It's all circular, isn't it? It's all circular. It's not linear. Yeah. It is. It is. And it's good to know, you know, let's get it out. Because how often can you say to a family, oh, actually, I don't want to come. I don't feel comfortable. So what we could look at is what can we do? Yeah. So what are your suggestions? What can we do? Well, I'm a big advocate that we don't have to do everything on the day that we're being dictated to. Yeah. So if, for instance, it's a birthday gathering and there's going to be people there that you're choosing not to be with. Now, that doesn't mean to say there's any real valid reason. OK, you just, for instance, have different alignment in values, etc. Why don't you choose to do something else the day before or the week before or the week after? You can still send an acknowledgement to the person for their birthday, but you can make an alternative option. Um, If, and this is where we talk about subjects such as abuse, if you're being invited to somewhere within the family and there's going to be someone there who has abused you in whatever way, made you feel uncomfortable in the past in whatever way. Not everybody wants to say, I don't want to become because that person's going to be there. But if you already know you don't want to be in their company, again, you can make that choice. And we say that when it comes to boundaries, you can make that choice. I'm not going to be there when that person is. And again, that gives you that opportunity to say, how about we go off and do something different? How do you feel about that, Chris? Yeah, I I truly believe that we do have choice, especially as adults. Um, uh, I do understand that if people are in an abusive relationship, say like domestic violence, for example, they may feel like they haven't got choice. And I completely understand that as well. Um, but unless something changes, nothing changes. So it's like, what is it and who is it that is making you uncomfortable or unhappy or um, self-harming in some way because of that? That's the impact that they have on you. Um, and what can you truly do about it? And you can say, actually, no, I'm not going. I'm not going to be in their company because so if someone asks you outright and you've got the courage to say why, say why. Yeah. But if you don't have the courage to say why, then that's fine. But be true to yourself. Don't give anybody this power over you just because there's an expectation there. You don't have to go along with it. Okay. And if you feel you are being press ganged into something that you don't want to do because of the dynamics of the relationship you're in then maybe you need to go and get that expert help that we've talked about so many times before in other podcasts um, to get yourself out of that situation but if you're not in an abusive relationship right now and you have got the freedom of choice um, not to go somewhere that's going to make you upset or feel harmed or whatever in some way then you do have the choice to say actually no and you do have the choice as you said Bev to say I'm not going to be there on that occasion but let's do something different on a different day just me and you yeah so this is where we look at different choices because if we go along with everyone's expectations it has an impact on us yeah. So it's not going to be that lovely, happy family gathering that you really want if you don't want to be there. Yeah. yeah. 
Now, other people want to go to these family gatherings, but they often feel self-conscious and anxious. And that comes from an anxiety that they're holding. And that's okay too. Acknowledge it. Again, ask yourself what works for you. So if you're feeling anxious because you maybe haven't been to a, a large family gathering, especially when we've been so used to um, separating ourselves and now we've got bigger gatherings coming forward, is there something that you want to, you know, if you need? So I, for instance, have hand cream with me a lot because by using hand cream to anybody else, I'm just putting hand cream on. But sometimes if I'm feeling a bit anxious, and no, the world doesn't really wouldn't recognise it in me, but I'm just putting hand cream on, but I'm reassuring myself. So it's thinking about the tools that you can have you can take with you. How about taking, you know, making sure there's if you haven't got someone to go with you and you're going to a family, but you feel that you'd like to go for an hour, take a friend with you. Yeah. Or keep the time frame to a shorter time frame. So for me. On some occasions, it there was an expectation of, of having to spend the whole day there or a certain amount of hours to, to make it look okay, if you get my meaning. Yeah, yes. there's an expectation there. You can't just go there for dinner and then leave because that's rude. There's an expectation that you'll go there for a certain amount of time before, have the dinner and certain time afterwards. Um, and that could be to a party as well. You can't just turn up for the buffet. You've got to spend a bit of time there, have the food and then spend a bit of time after. But if you just sort of like, I don't know, explain that I, I've got complex PTSD at the moment, as, as you know, and I, I think you have as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, I had a children's party to go to and I love my nieces and nephews to bits. Yeah. And I actually do love children as well, but I can't deal with the noise at the moment. It's just too triggering. And I just thought, right, OK, it's between this time and this time. So I'm going to go between this time and this time um, to shorten it so I don't subject myself to too much overwhelm. And it was difficult to sit there with all the, these lovely screaming children that were having a fantastic time. But my brain just couldn't deal with it so I stayed there for a little bit of time had a bit of food spoke to a few people and then I came home and when I came home I was like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but we're often especially if we're people pleasers you know because we spoke about people pleasing before we're frightened oh what if we say something what do they think about us yeah what if I don't go what would they think about us and there's that fear of missing out <gasps> yeah. I don't go I won't be part of the family you are part of the family. Yep. And if by looking after yourself, your family who are meant to be loving you unconditionally are choosing to make a judgment on you. Yeah. Well, do you really want to be in the company of the family that are meant to be loving? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I think if you have got a an understanding family or a blended family or a family of your choice. So I haven't got no parents around me or grandparents. Um, I have on my husband's side, but not on my side. I've got none of that. Um, so my siblings are the family um, and we all get on really well. So that's great. Um, I explained the situation and it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No worries. That's all fine. And that's what we want for everybody, don't we? Absolutely. You know, that understanding, that empathy, and that I'm so I'm pleased that you just could make what you, you what you could, you know? Yeah, because when we put an invite out, we put an invite out to everyone. We don't want anyone to feel missed out. Yeah. But let's be honest, we don't necessarily expect everyone to come. No. And that includes weddings. How often, you know, that causes you know, uh, a lot of things and dress it really does and it's not meant to be a stressful no. time you know Christmas is not meant to be stressful and then there's some of us that have family but we're unable to be with family yeah yeah so this is where 
I always like to think of it as how can we reframe something? So instead of thinking, oh, I want to be around a big family table, but I haven't got the family. Well, these days, it's unusual to have a family with no blending in it, shall we put, shall we say, you know, I call blended families, step families, etc. Yeah. So actually, we do have families, but maybe in a different way. So blended family is one word. Another name is, I call it a chosen family. Yeah. So it doesn't someone, need to be blood, does it? It can be no. friends. So yeah. one of, a couple of my best Christmases have been where, you know, I had a, got a friend, she's a dear friend, and she was having all her kitchen refurbed. So it's a bit like a building site, but she wanted to host <laughs> She wanted to host a Christmas dinner and she put together these tables, put tablecloths on it, decorated, put lights around the walls. And you know what? It's one of the best Christmases because everyone that came and there was some of us that were spending Christmas on our own. We just came. It was a, a big chosen family event. And what was lovely, it wasn't about how beautiful the table looked. The beauty became in the fact that it had loads of different candles, but we all relaxed and we thoroughly enjoyed it. Because you all wanted to be there as well. We made a choice. And the yeah. difference in that atmosphere is a difference rather than it got to be there. Yeah. And I also think that if you do have to be somewhere because of expectations, not only are you, as you said, on the back foot subconsciously, you're already guarded and you're waiting for something to go wrong. It's not nice for the host or hostess either because they've, I'm, I'm not talking abusive here. I'm just talking, no. you know, expectation and, and you, you turning up somewhere. Um, it's not fair on them because they've gone above and beyond to put on this great, big event or whatever small event whatever but they they've put their heart and soul into it but if you don't want to be there you can't hide that no so that causes them then to be miserable and you to be miserable and I, I think sometimes it's just better just to stay away yeah and, and we talk about triggers so let's be honest yeah <laughs> How many triggers are happening before we've even arrived? So this is where we keep bringing it back. When we say bring it back to ourselves, ask ourselves, what are you feeling? What are you what feeling? Do you want? What, what do you, you want? Need? Yeah. yeah, yeah. What do you want? What options? And write out the different options. I do yeah. that sometimes. When I can't see the wood for the trees, first thing, okay, what are my choices? Even if I don't follow them all through, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Just get them out there. What can I do? If I can't, if we're not going there, and we don't necessarily have to explain every single reason why we can't go to something, yet yeah. we feel, especially if we're trying to avoid confrontation, mm -hmm. but by avoiding it, we cause more confrontation to ourselves internally. Yeah, lots of conflict internally, yeah. And then it has repercussions further along the, on the road, and we've all done that at times yeah. to try and avoid hurting people. Well, we don't, none of us want to hurt anybody, but at no. the same time, um, we do have to start putting ourselves first, especially like, you know, our podcast listeners are mainly, or the people that we talk about are mainly people that have gone through abusive relationships in some way, and they've been harmed, the trust is gone, their self-worth, their self-esteem is low or gone, and sticking up for themselves and finding their voice and um, being able to put their own needs first before anybody else's, before those expectations and all of that. It's bloody difficult. Let's, yes. let's, let's say it as it is. It's really extremely difficult for many, but we've got to start somewhere, haven't we? Absolutely. And, so, and we're not saying just go out and do it on everything. No. <laughs> but... What we're saying is we're giving you permission to start exploring it yes. in a safe place because yeah. before, if they've been in an abusive relationship, regardless of what abuse, they may be fearful. You know, I've been there. I'm not, not preaching or talking that, but fearful of the repercussions. Yeah. But there also comes a time where even if you're fearful of what someone else is doing around you, so are you in their company? 
Do you want to continue being in their company? Is it right for you? Does it make you feel good? So it brings up other questions. Yeah. I just want to touch upon some examples of what I've heard through third parties over the years. So um, a mum may be abused or a dad might have been abused by the parents, but then they feel that they are okay to then take their children round to the grandparents' house because those grandparents wouldn't do anything to the children because mum and dad are there to protect the children. Yeah. I've heard that so oh, many times. So many times. So many times. And the thing that I did with my mum, who was a victim and perpetrator herself, and she was in an abusive relationship, she's no longer with us. Um, uh, I went round there because I wanted to try and get my mum out of the house and out of the relationship. And I felt wrongly, but I felt that I needed to help my mum find her way, even though she had done horrible things to other people. But I made sure that my children did not go around there. I, and then someone said, oh yeah, but you're, um, you're, taking that grandparent relationship away from your child and I went I beg your pardon no it's an abusive relationship that I had I'm not going to subject my children to that they've got healthy grandparents loving caring nurturing grandparents on the other side um so why would I subject and again this is not a judgment but it's just I I just don't like um want people to think that just because there's an expectation there to keep happy families if you truly do not want those relationships to continue with your children you don't have to you can break them yeah exactly that and that comes back to the choice yeah so it is sad that the children don't have a relationship with their grandparents on that side however However, that's not your doing. No. What you're doing is protected. What it's who broke that is the perpetrator broke that. Yeah. No yeah. one else, the perpetrator. Yeah. And it makes it very challenging because everybody um, needs to be heard, but there's also respecting boundaries. But let's not respect the perpetrator. You know, they've made their choices. But if we're doing our protection and the hardest thing, the hardest thing is we've all been in abusive relationships or the, most of the people listening and not realised it was abusive at that time. And we do hear people, but sometimes it takes us to absorb it, look around, keep looking at it and checking in with ourselves. And finally, we do go, you know what? No more. No more. So even though there's somebody that may feel that at the moment they have got choice or it doesn't affect them, that's fine. But we are doing, we are raising the awareness, raising the education. And the hardest thing is just being there and looking after yourself again. If you're witnessing somebody going constantly going back into an abusive arena within the family, if that's their choice as an adult. And I make that clear. Absolutely, that is their choice as an adult. Um, but I think where it comes to protecting children, rather than playing the happy families and sweeping any abuse that's happened in the past under the carpet and unaddressed, I think it's um, it's it's almost like a wait um, a bit of dynamite waiting to go off. To be to be honest, and the poop to hit the fan so to speak because the truth has a way of coming out doesn't it and Absolutely. we can't just keep pretending that everything is okay and everything's hunky-dory because that's not being truthful to yourselves and it's letting the perpetrators get away with blue murder uh, but I want to caveat all of this I also know some victim and survivors that have gone through abuse at the hands of parents and the parents hadn't realised and honest, honestly hadn't realised how their behaviour 
towards their children growing up had been abusive because they had gone through that and much worse in some families. So all they are doing is living their lives as they learnt it from their parents. And it's not until we have awareness, we have education, that we can look back and go, actually, that's not right. So I know that some victim and survivors have worked with their parents, for example, grandparents, to understand what had gone wrong. The apologies have happened. The, um, the working out of the relationships has happened to a point where everything is not forgotten, but it's good because yeah. everybody knows where they stand. Everybody knows, um, you know, I'm, I'm really, really sorry. That should never have happened, uh, you know, and that. So I think there in that kind of environment, that's completely different to an environment where the perpetrator is still allowed to perpetrate and everyone's going along with it to keep happy families. Absolutely. Um, and that is a really, you know, thank you for putting that point across because that is so important. And that's when we see trans, uh, uh, transgenerational yes. trauma come through. Yeah. And you can, as you can hear, I've still got my voice, but it's, <laughs> it's shaky. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's when the trauma transcends down through yeah. generations and we can see that let's look at the royal family regardless of what people's views are let's look at that family you know how often do we see people oh they need to behave like that because they were born into that that's it you can see the messages and the expectation that's happening you know we've seen it where Harry's made his decision decision to step outside and change his role and look at the backlash that's happened by people and the judgments that doesn't represent everybody's view but he's made a choice that's right for him yeah, and his family yeah. off he goes you yeah. know and you hear other people say, oh, but traditionally, traditionally, well, you're right. That's worked for everyone traditionally. But now, going forward, it will look slightly different. But did it work? Behind closed doors, I bet it wow. didn't work. I bet, that, <laughs> I bet that family is as fractured as any other family up and down this country. And we only need to see, I mean, without going into it too far because yes. we don't want to diverse of that but we have divorce we have affairs you know there's lots of different things that yeah. go on so yeah they are um I'm going to say iconic only because it's a family that we all acknowledge no. and we yeah. all know regardless yeah. of anybody's views mm -hmm. so and I think they demonstrate that family dynamics and the expectations really well because we have expectations they have expectations and whether or not we choose to agree with them that is a you know if anybody's thinking I can't I don't understand hopefully that will give them you know an example to consider yeah. so let's talk about reframing again then so like um if you've got a big family gathering coming up let's just use Christmas because it's nice and easy to use um what do you want your Christmas to look like yeah how do you want to feel over the festive period who do you truly want to spend time with do you need to spend time on your own what are you going to eat what are you going to buy or not buy what are you going to make or not make there's so many different tangible choices that you can make have power and control over your own decisions and make Christmas or whatever family gathering it is you're going to, make it mean something to you. So absolutely. So my, one of my questions I would ask also is what does it mean to you? Yeah. So if you're going, you know, to a funeral, what does that mean to you? If you're going to... Dying. Yeah. So... Just because it's a funeral service, it doesn't mean it's got the same meaning for every person. Yeah. So it is about what's the meaning to you, like a birthday. I mean, I know how disappointed I was that one of my Christmases wasn't going to be traditional. But there again, I also learned as a child that traditionally I didn't live at home with my mum and dad. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you now, 
some of my best Christmases was when I was actually in the children's home. Yeah. We were the only ones. So, yes, it was sad that we weren't with a, our traditional family. But you know what? The fact, the Christmas that we did have was with our chosen family. It was yes. in a different way. I've been to an Indian restaurant on Christmas Day because I didn't want to have a traditional turkey dinner for different reasons. Yeah. I've even been on the ski slopes and had pizza. But there's still Christmas memories. Yeah, yeah. And I know my sister, Diane, she, she won't mind me sharing this. She's like, I said, like, oh, what are you doing for Christmas Day? Oh, I'm going to have beans on toast and I'm just going to watch telly and I'm going to be in my pyjamas. And I just like, yeah, you go, girl. You do what's best for you. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the thing. Why should we put our expectations on Diane? Yeah. Because, you know, that's what we want. So, yeah, yeah. I think I think it would be interesting to hear if anyone's got any thoughts and opinions. Yeah, I, I just think that the, the message that I want to get out there today on this podcast is think about what you want and do you. But I, I also know victim survivors of um, other cultures and I'm going to say ethnic minorities here. There is a, a bigger expectation that they have to conform to tradition of what their family's always done. And just speaking to, um, you know, ladies that I've worked with on my courses and they're like, I could never go against what my, what my mum says or what my dad says. The expectation is that I rock up and do as I'm told. And these are adult human beings that are telling me this and I hear what they're saying because in those communities um even in some religious white communities there is the expectation that you know you go to evening song midnight mass and but we're saying what is it you need if you've gone for abuse you've been told what to do when to do it you, you've never probably been given the choice and you've never been able to just do you. So we are saying as adults, what is it you want? Yeah. What do you want to do? Is the time now, and it might not be, but is the time now for you to actually go, hang on a minute, I ain't doing that. Yeah. I'm doing this. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And it's also sometimes it's not just one conversation. It takes several conversations, you know, and it's yeah. And it's and I'm not saying it's easy. We're not saying it's a walk in the park, but the benefits to yourself, it's the benefits that we're thinking about, the long term benefits to yourself. Yeah. And I think also if you do have children as the adult, you are their role model. They will learn from you. So if you are going along for happy family's sake, you're teaching them that. Yes. Whereas if you go, uh uh-uh, no more, this is what I'm doing and this is why I'm doing it, you're teaching your children how to stick up for themselves yeah. and and that they do have choice and that and how to handle it in a in a not professional way, but in a way that's not confrontational. Yeah. This is what's happening and this is why it's happening. And absolutely these are my boundaries and actually you by saying I have to do or I have to be somewhere um that's overstepping my boundary my boundary is this it looks like this and actually you're not going to step over it so yeah. you are the role model uh, and uh, you've just I've just remembered in it um a memory of when my father died but when my father died he was my abuser I hadn't seen him mm-hmm. and suddenly I was by my uncles who was my dad's brother and my mum turned up my children were only young my daughter would have been five my son seven and um, my mum walked through the door and I had not seen her for for years and when she walked in obviously I must have reacted in a way because my children 
of sitting down moved into my body because yeah. children are, are very yeah. aware aren't they so I just put my arm around, around them and my mum came in and she was very upset and she was saying about and obviously my tone of voice was different I was keeping polite but it's loaded I'm yeah. I'm I'm protecting myself and I said I just want to know what he's died off and if it's genetic or not yeah and my mum was visibly upset so my children are watching as if to say and then yeah. they're like who's that yeah and I said that's my mum this mm-hmm. is your nan and um they just and I had my arms around to reassure them and I was sitting still and my uncle intervened and when we left we, we didn't cause a scene said goodbye to my uncle and that and off we went said goodbye to my mum but not in a way that they would expect to yeah. because they had another nan so here they're seeing one nan and not the other one and as we got into the car I'll never forget my daughter said that witch isn't my nan yeah <laughs> and I said she is your nan and she's not though like other nans she won't hurt you but she doesn't know how to love you as yeah. any other nans do so I did it in a way that was yeah right for my children's because I didn't want them to be frightened but I wanted them to know you don't Mm. have to be in the company of people just because they come over under a certain headline yeah absolutely and there is this expectation isn't there from um people that so when you've come from an abusive family but you are related by marriage for example to what I would deem a functional family so you've come from dysfunctional but then you're linked to a functional family there might be expectations from the functional family that you behave in a certain way but because of your experiences you can't yeah um and this functional expectation over here they don't understand trauma and impact they just don't understand it because i've never had to deal with it no um yeah And so that can cause a lot of um, angst on both sides and a lot of distress. And, um, yeah. I've had that. Me too. And that's why I'm trying to explain it, but in a, in a way that I'm not giving anything away. Well, I don't Um, mind. I I don't mind. I have to give an example. So my children, expectations of kisses. Yes. When you say goodbye. And we, we've talked about this before. Mm. And I'm like, no, no, no expectation. If my children want to go to you and kiss you on the cheek, shake your hand, give you a hug, fine. But no one is forcing them no. or expecting them to go and cuddle uncle whoever or auntie whoever because I'm trying to, and I have taught them how to keep themselves safe they have the choice so if they don't want to go to somebody for whatever reason they don't have to and just because your expectation of that is that's rude I don't give a monkeys I really don't because I'm trying to break dysfunctional abusive patterns by protecting my children but sometimes that can be seen from a functional family's perspective as all wrong yes Yes, and you've ex- explained that really well. I mean, one of the things I've never liked is when adults tickle children and they keep doing it. I don't like it. If a child has said no, you know, and keeps saying no, stop, listen to that child. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, I absolutely hear you. And you see that at birthday parties, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, you do. And but, people just don't like realize do that unless you've been through it why would you but why would you but we know from our work Beverly don't we so and I call you Beverly and Bev sometimes you know go with the flow um um we know that perpetrators will be watching every situation and perpetrators are often family members or people you know friends they will be waiting for every normal opportunity to go there and groom and abuse so it's part because they don't just groom the child they're grooming the people around they're grooming the adults 
So please just be aware of what is happening with your children and what your children are telling you through their verbal and non-verbal body cues. Yeah, and I'll extend that and say that if you have any adult members that are saying, thank you for the invite, however, I can't make it that day, or can we do something different, or I'm really sorry I won't be there, respect that. Yeah. Respect that. Yeah. So, right, that's my last How thought. How go so deep? all the time <laughs> we didn't mean to this was meant to be more but that's what this conversations are all about they're reality yeah. they're real they're raw they're uncut they're authentic and if we don't speak about them I mean I know that we've got some listeners here that haven't necessarily been survivors but they're interested to know because people around them have been through that and they they say to me I don't know what to say or do and I say be you and don't mm. worry if you've said something wrong. If you've used the wrong language, don't worry. Allow that person to tell you. And you know what? Sometimes we get it wrong and sometimes we, we have to apologise. That's yeah. okay too. Because yeah. isn't that what real relationships are built on? Listening Can to I, each other. Before we close, just bring up something else. So I'm in conversations with a survivor at the moment and they... Um, have said they've got lots of friends around them but the friends don't get them um they are living with this trauma day in day out and they're trying to be they're trying to function as normal whatever that is with a smile on their face you know the masking that we all do um because the friends don't get how it is to live with the trauma on a day-to-day -day basis and they don't necessarily want to hear about it and they don't necessarily understand that it is something that lives with you day in day out and impacts you at different stages and it isn't something that you can just get over but that's people's expectations isn't it that if we've gone through something like this that it's like, oh God, you're not talking about that again. Oh, you're not feeling that way again, are you? And oh, oh, oh. Um, so we do this masking, um, but this particular person was just saying that they are so lonely. So even though they've got friends and some family members, people, unless you have gone through it, they just don't get it. And I understand what they're saying, but I also want to say, unless you have been through it, why would you get it? Absolutely. And that's that's why, you know, you, um, that person, send them the link to this podcast so they can hear it. But that person, that's the importance of having peer-to-peer -peer support as well. Yeah. Even if you access it online, if you can go in person. But also, um, sometimes... I remember keeping the mask on thinking, oh, crack, if I share anything about my past and people see inside, they don't want to be my friend. And I look back now and I think, do you know how sad? That was really lonely because when I did take the mask off, some people don't know what to say. And sadly, you lose a few people along the way. But then you also make new friends and you have solid support with no mask on. Yeah. And, and you know, like we're saying about families, you know, you build your chosen family around you, which are your friends, and you build your own support as you go along and it stops you being lonely. And I think when you get to a place where you're being honest with yourself, you can be honest with other people. So for me, at some family events, I've like, I've gone, you know what, I really did want to come along, but today I've woken up and I just can't do it. Yeah. Um, I hope you understand and I'm really really sorry and you know next time it will be different um yeah. but then there's an understanding then and because you're not you're not being a victim inverted commas you, but you're being truthful and honest to yourself and you're being you don't have to lie or make an excuse up to anybody else because it yeah. is what it is yes Exactly, exactly that. So I hope that's helped. And if anyone's got any questions, we have got the email breaking the cycle to step forward at gmail.com. Um, or you can add the comments 
underneath if you're watching us on youtube put the comments in youtube if you're listening to us through a podcast format again you can contact us there um and or you can contact us through facebook breaking the cycle to step forward instagram and twitter <laughs> we've got them all now <laughs> now my voice is just there. about gone my voice yeah. is just about gone now <laughs> so it's goodbye from me and thank you everyone for listening chris uh, yeah goodbye from me keep safe everyone do your grounding techniques and if you need to speak to anybody please do to take care of yourselves thank you thank you bye